important is basically what you're looking for. So this is what it looks like. This is just a kind of a quick thing. Like, okay, fine, I'm going to hit the button and I'm going to go and erase it. Now, when you, you see down here, this, is a, this particular drive is like a 40 gig drive and it's going to take about 16 minutes to wipe. And it's going to do a verification on the hardware and wipe and be done. And then it's going to write a log file to the first sector of the drive, saying what it's wiped and what's actually happened and transpired, if it had any problems or anything to deal with. But the real trick here is the one thing that a lot of the others, not only is it built in, but one of the other things is, is that it, the other programs don't traditionally get those bad blocks. So basically, when Gordon was talking about it, that's what uh, Gordon Hughes is the guy heading the project. Basically, this was one of his points, was that he actually goes after the data that's been reallocated. Uh, instead of actually following the sectors and going through the standard process, they go track by track. So they start at the track and they wipe each thing in the track and they ignore the redirected blocks rather than what software does, which is uh, uh, basically what you have is you have two tables. In the bad block list, there's a P list, which is your permanent primary list. This is what the manufacturer did when they formatted the drive and said these were bad blocks. They should have no data in them. They were the permanent list. So there shouldn't be any. There's a, there are ways to get stuff in there, but you know, that's a different forensics matter. Uh, and then there's the G list, and that's the grown list. Basically what's happening is as you're using your drive and you're filling up these 512, it's getting reallocated. That's where that list comes from. So now the secure erase doesn't delete the G list. Basically what it does is it just wipes those sectors anyway below that level. So the G list will still say it's a bad sector because they wrote to it at one time, came back with ECC. So you really don't want to use those sectors anyway, but you don't want to put content there either and you want to get rid of the content that is there. And uh, so uh, the constant issue here that people keep talking about is, well, you know, how many times do I have to wipe it? I mean, that seems to be a pretty constant discussion. Everybody heard this one, right? Yeah. And everybody goes, oh, 35 times or, you know, seven times or whatever. Well, so the point was to address this. One wipe across the drive with any pattern whatsoever will eliminate the ability to recover it with software, period. Nobody on the planet that you that has just software will be able to recover it. And even if you're using something like an atomic force microscope, it is, the error rate is so high, it is almost impossible for it to be useful. Because, for instance, when you're sitting there with an atomic microscope trying to read this content, it, uh, it will basically have, you, you'll have somebody like sitting there reading it going, I have a one, write that down. I have a two, write that down, you know, or whatever, or one, zero. And you go through the whole process. <laughs> It's not really a one or a zero, though, because it's encoded in a wave format, but there you go. Uh, so anyway, the point is, is that once that's actually transpired, there is, no, uh, there is no, no way for you to recover it with that. A 36K JPEG file using an atomic force microscope will take three months to do, just so you know. That's what you're looking at. Now, there is a paper. If you guys don't believe me, I have a friend named Dave Kleiman and Craig Wright, and they've written a paper about this. Uh, it's been published out there. Um, and it's recent, like December or something. They basically tested 56 different kinds of drives and went through this process pre-2006 drives, which were longitudinal drives, which uh, means the data was stored this way on the platter, which means you actually have some variations in the track where you can read some content. New drives since 2006 are perpendicular, and they're stored up and down in the platter itself. So therefore, there's going to be less uh, content that's going to be able to be recovered. It's going to be a higher error rate. So we're even beyond what is feasibly possible from a recovery standard. So the whole point is that Gordon basically worked on this program. He went and had two meetings with the ANSI standards. They actually built in the T13 standard basically is the ATA command set that you guys might know of. Uh, he has one set of standards that was in 2001 and then another set of standards in 2004. And almost every drive out there supports these current standards. Uh, the 2004 standard is obviously better, and it does qualify for, you know, federal government for classified secret erasure processes, and you just need to pay attention to these two standards, because any drive that's manufactured after 2005 should have this enhanced standard. Um, so ultimately, that was kind of his point, is that now maybe people will do this. Maybe now, because it's so fast, they can just run it directly on the hardware. They don't have to go get a special program. Now, what I want you to understand is this program that I showed on the screen earlier was only to initiate the command. It is possible to use other ways to initiate the command. So he has an executable out there that will boot on a boot floppy to initiate the command. But once the command is initiated, these, there is no software looking at that device at all. It's done completely in hardware. So it's an agreement between your motherboard and the drive itself that says, let's go wipe. And it does it really fast. So 
And then the other thing is that it has some protection processes in place. Originally, when the first version of this was released, what he did was, uh, anybody use like the BIOS to actually put in an ATA password into your hard drive? Right? You know, everybody know what I'm talking about? So what happens is when there's an ATA password on your drive, nothing is read from the drive at all. If somebody pulls the, the drive out and goes and puts it in a computer and tries to image it, it's going to respond with abort errors. Uh, it's going to just be abort for every single thing. It will not get any bytes back at all from that drive that's going to be useful to anybody. Uh, so the ATA password will at least protect that. The ATA password can be cleared. There's ways to get around some things, and there's you know, other items in, in the list there. So the ultimate point was is that when he started this process, he said, well, what if something happens? What if the power gets interrupted or something? How do you know that it's complete? Because then no log was written or nothing was finished, so you don't know how far it made it. So his first, his first process is basically to set the password. And originally, I don't think anybody knew what the password was. So the point is you lose power. This password's on the drive. If you know the password, you can actually get around the problem fairly easily. Um, otherwise, you come back and continue on, and it will continue to wipe. The problem after that is a lot of people complained. So now, there's the password. So it prints it on the screen. So I don't know how secure that is. It's like if, I, if it didn't finish and I wasn't standing there, I have, no, I have no easy way to protect the rest of the data it didn't wipe if we lost power or something like that. But at least it does this. So the whole point, again, is we still have physical access. So if you want to make sure that this process is running, make sure you have physical access to the drive and that you have completed this process and you at least have this password so you could get into the drive if it locked or something else happened. Uh, because it'll be a useless drive to you if you didn't know this password or you didn't have the ability to reset this password. But uh, I highly recommend using this, this, this process. It's really secure, it does a great job, and it is much faster. So for instance, 40 gig drive we did in 16 minutes, a 500 gig drive we did two and a half hours. So that's actually usable in a lab. And there are products out there that take advantage of these standards. There's, a, there's actually a tool that's made by CPR Tools that's called the Hammer. And the Hammer actually uses, they have a SCSI version and a standard IDE SATA version that you can just plug the drive in, you hit a button, it'll apply the ATA stuff, and it'll actually do the secure erase and do it very fast. Um, it's not a, a cheap piece of hardware. The cheapest piece of hardware you have is your motherboard. You can just plug this straight into a motherboard, boot on a disk or a floppy, and start the wipe process right away. Um, they've done some things to protect from viruses initiating this command. So there are some like frozen biases and things like that, but you can unfreeze the bias. There's a way to do that as well. So the newest version, uh, 3.2, will unfreeze the bias and allow you to wipe your drive. And it's a really cool process. You should try it. So, <clears throat> so that was that one. Okay, so let's talk about a new file. Now, maybe a few people know, know this. When I first started doing this, no one knew this one, but uh, we'll see. So we have this whole list here, and I got a book, if anybody could guess. This one's from O'Reilly, The Art of Application Performance Testing. So I have a book for anybody that can tell me what my next slide is going to say. Not you, Ducky. What's the next? Yes. Nope. Nope. What? What is it? No. That's new standard. Next. That's publicly easily available for everybody and probably on some machines. Well, maybe only six of you in the room are using this stuff, but. Uh, no. There is a FAT64, or it's referred to. It's a slang. So no one gets a book yet. So, <laughs> so EXFAT. OK, so here's the deal. Uh, EXFAT, basically FAT64, is, uh, it was released originally on CE 6.0. So, but Service Pack 1 of Vista updated everybody. Everybody who has Vista, all six people, have, <laughs> have, when you go to format a disk now, and this is where it starts to become a problem and people don't realize it. What's the largest memory stick you can buy now? You go buy a USB memory stick and at, off the shelf, Right, 64, maybe there's some 128 in the way, but 64 in my hand, which I got for $100. So everybody's going to buy it, right? So you stick this in a Windows Vista machine. What options do you get to format? You get, you get FAT64, EX FAT, or you get NTFS, which NTFS is not very kind to these devices, I can tell you as a whole.